I have some simulations that work a little bit better for explaining how these orbital shapes work. And so if you look, I'm going to just add a 1s orbital and I'm going to tell it to go. Now these are, there's a total of two electrons that can fit in here. And I know it's probably coming across as just like little blips, right? And so what we're doing is we're showing the probability of like where we're gonna find the electrons. So the electrons are actually moving all around in this space. But if we let this go long enough, what we should see is that it looks like a spherical shape. And of course it's like a 2D picture, so it's hard to see that, but you can kind of see that there's an internal area and then this external area that it's doing the calculations with. Now I'm going to layer a 2s on top of it. So the 2s is over here. Now remember the 1s was red, white, right? So now look at this. Do you see how much larger the 2s is than the 1s? The electron has a lot more space to be in, in a way. Now, normally what would go next is the 2p's and then the 3s's. But this particular simulation will only lay S's on top of each other or P's on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and pop to the 3S so that you can see what that looks like. So you're restarting over. Now remember the inner one was the 1S and then the green was the 2S. And hopefully you're seeing that now the 3S electrons and, and each of these, it's only two electrons in that space, but they're moving really, really fast all over the place. But each of those little color regions, there's only two electrons in all of them. And hopefully what you're seeing is that there's like this kind of like tiny, tiny region between each of the regions that don't have electrons in them. So you can almost see like just a little tiny bit of space. They don't jump into each other's space. The three electrons, the three S electrons stay with the three S electrons, the two S stays with the two. So now I'm going to jump over and show how the two P's work. Like I said, it'd be great to layer those on top of these. It just does make for a really confusing picture. So now I'm going to jump over and I'm going to remember there are no one P's. So we're going to start with the two, the two X. So see those again, there's two electrons in this region and we're not showing um, more than one type of P orbital at the moment. This is considered as a whole one of the two P orbitals. Now I'm going to layer a 3P on top of it so you can see how much larger that the 3P is than the 2P. So I've got to make sure that I'm layering the same style of one on top. Remember the inner one is the 2P and then this is the X and this is the 3PX. So hopefully you can see that each orbital as you get wider and wider, like further and out from the nucleus, it gets, has a lot more space that the electron could exist in. And of course there are other P electrons. So I can go back and I can do, um, I can do like the two PY and here's a two PY. You can notice like it just, it looks vertical rather than horizontal. And the two PZ actually would be coming out towards us. We have to change the axis to be able to see it. But those are some examples of what orbitals look like.